point out, I just want to make sure you guys are able to see it. Uh, if we can get the lights, we'll begin. I'm going to start off by showing you uh, images of portraits that kind of stand out to me and I thought that were appropriate for um, this, I guess, this workshop, okay? So, <clears throat> no, I have to stand over here now, okay. okay. Oops. Come on, technology. I'll just stand over here then. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is Rembrandt. I mean, I, I almost feel like you can't talk about portraiture without talking about Rembrandt, okay? So, again, just real quickly, the images that I'm going to discuss. And, I can, and we'll go back to these too if you, if you have any questions about any of these, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, so keep those images in mind, okay? Uh, <clears throat> the next thing, I want to talk about is how does planar structure and light logic um, apply to these images? Okay, so the first image I have up here is a planar head. How many of you guys have seen this or something similar to this? Okay, some, not all. Okay, so it's a kind of a classic or traditional way of um, working um, with bust. Okay, uh, it doesn't happen too much these days in, uh, unless you go to like a private school. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So these, um, on this head, it's easier to see because obviously the lines, uh, it's a sculpture, so the lines are hard edge and easier to see. Um, and the next image, I, I put uh, the Manet next to it to see if we can see some of the similarities. Okay, because today I'm going to be talking about planar structure, okay, um, and how does light logic play with that? Okay, what's the interaction between the planes and the way light hits them? Um, so, what can you guys, what kind of similarities do you guys see here? It's three dimensional. Three dimensional, okay, that's good. What else? The cheek and the chin. The cheek and the chin, very similar, yeah. right? Okay. Um, so, the cheek and the chin are uh, structural features. Uh, another thing I want to point out are, is the light logic happening in this uh, slide here. Okay, so today, and you're going to see it happen um, when I do the demo, but I just wanted to make sure to give you some context, okay, so when I say, uh, during my demo, I'm going to say, okay, for your, your objective today is to have a clear separation of light and shadow for the portrait, okay, so and I think these two are good examples of that, okay, um, and later when I talk about uh, planes, this one is a little more, more subtle here than it is on the other one. But at least you have an idea of what I mean when I say planes. Okay, when I say planes, what I essentially mean is the front of something, the side of something, or the bottom of something. Okay, and when we look at our model later today, we're going to try to identify each side of whatever it is we're looking at. And that's what's going to give you a, um, the illusion of three dimensions. Okay? And um, it's going to be a little repetitive because, you know, just like learning a new song, the more you hear it, the more it sticks, okay? So it's just going to be other images that have the same idea. Okay, and here's what it looks like in color, which I think is very important. When you see it in, a, in black and white, and then when you see it in color, okay, there's two totally different feelings, okay? So in the black and white image, it's easier to see because the other image is also black and white, right? But in color, this is what it looks like. It's very subtle, almost easy to miss, almost easy to, or difficult to see the similarities, okay? Because the color, it kind of just takes over and you're just mesmerized by it, okay? <clears throat> uh, here's another example of planar structure um, with similar light logic and uh, colors that have been um, mixed uh, but not, say, blended on the canvas, okay? So 
Today we're going to try to have uh, some clear separation between uh, colors and planes. Okay, so uh, keep this image in mind for what you're trying to do today, or what I would like you to try to kind of try today. Okay, uh, given the amount of time, it'd be very difficult to make a Rembrandt. Okay, <laughs> so um, but I think if you can get something similar to this, um, you'll have a good time. Okay, so. Kind of setting up your expectations. Um, <clears throat> what else here? Okay, value relationships. And the reason why I talk about value relationships because, to be honest, it's the one, one of the things that I have the most trouble with. So now it's going to be the thing you're going to have the most trouble with. <laughs> okay? So, uh, <clears throat> but you might have other things that you need to work on too. Okay? But for me, I just found this totally uh, difficult. And when I um, when I start putting or seeing images next to each other, like the way you see it here, it's starting to make more sense for me. Okay, so uh, when you look at the color image, you'll see that there's, a, there's you know, quite a few colors in um, the skin tone, right? Uh, if you look at the black and white image, there's not a, it's not a huge or wide range of values. Okay, it's pretty much it's gray for the most part. Okay, so when you're when you're mixing your colors, and you'll see me do it. Okay, the key is to try to keep. Okay, look at the difference between this color and that color. Very clear difference, right? But if you look at here and there, it's not that different, and that's really difficult to understand uh, or to uh, put down on canvas. Is because. This color contrast is so high, right? That's, wow, that's really red. And um, that's not as red, I guess, right? But this is, wow, look at how similar that is, okay? So what happens is we put something down and this becomes too, um, the value relationship is too high, okay? So uh, a lot of mistakes that I make and that I observe from other students is when, say you see like, it's not necessarily a crease, but like a little fold, Sometimes you make those too dark. Okay, we definitely see a darker spot there, but we, the, relation, the value relationship we put down is incorrect. We may get the color right, but the value is uh, incorrect. And um, again, just keep this in mind. It, it makes more sense when I do it. I just wanted to give you the context um, for what I'm going to show you uh, when I sit down and paint, okay? And just more examples, okay? You can see the, 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 um, the value patterns here. It's not that complicated. It's very simple. Okay, so when you go in and put color, you see, these are a little bit more nuanced. Okay, it's a little bit more complicated in the color. Okay, so say, you know, it's a little bit like pinkish there, a little bit, you know, peachy there. It's paler there, but look on this side. It's almost indistinguishable. Okay, so that's going to be very important when you are mixing uh, flesh tones today. Okay, and the key is to keep the relationships subtle. You can have lots of colors, okay, but how dark and how light those colors are are going to be key uh, for a naturalistic, um, a naturalistic result. Okay. Again, just to beat it in you, since I only have so much time, right? More repetition, same idea, okay? So the light is easier to see than the planes. Um, it's real clear in the nose. You can see the front plane. This is the bottom plane right here. Very distinct, okay? Uh, what, where else? You can think of, you know, let's not look, look at the little things. Look at the big picture, okay? The, the thing in light is the front plane. The thing in shadow is the side plane. Okay, so keep these things in mind. Um, when, I, when I do the demo and I talk about, uh, again, just, you know, some, this is the effect we're trying to achieve today. Something similar to this. Okay, so, you know, lots of colors are not extremely different from each other, but uh, there are some warm and cool shifts, some light and dark shifts, okay, but uh, they're relatively subtle. And the black and white image is what I hope to demonstrate 
when I, when I put these two up there together. Okay? Any questions? Let's see here. So that was, again, that was a relatively fast. You know, I didn't spend too much time uh, looking at the originals. Um, we're going to move on. Okay, so we're going to move on. So the next thing before I start the demo, I wanted to show you um, <clears throat> what these planes look like. And uh, I'm going to do it on my iPad. I'm going to draw directly on somebody's face. Is it, do we have any volunteers? No, probably okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. What about our model? Oh, Would right. you want to do that? Yeah, well, this would be really helpful. Okay, yeah. Oh, this is perfect. Okay. So, uh, the image I'm about, I'm about to project is um, not lit very strategically, right? Because it's sort of on the fly. Um, so, and that's a good thing because I want to show you how important the structure is. It's weird because in my teaching, I always like to take people back to the beginning as if you never took an art class before. So, as I'm talking right now, I'm noticing, like, I wonder, you know, you, like that. you know, it's like, I wonder if they know what I'm talking about. Or am I seeing it differently? Or, you know? So, bear with me. And if you have any questions, um, Please, just, you know, just, just ask me. Do we need to find that one again? Uh, no, I think it should be fine. OK. Good? Yeah, good. Let me get, get the image here. Okay. Perfect. OK. Did everybody see? Sorry, your head is going to be huge. Okay. okay. This is a good angle. And the reason why I say that is because it makes the planes a little bit more um, easy to identify. Okay. So I always like to start big. Okay. And during my demo, you can see here. Oops. Wrong, wrong tool. That's a good so, Okay. Right color. All right. So the first thing we need to um, figure out is how to get this thing. Right. Okay. Could you guys see the marks I'm making here? Yeah, right on top of the head, right there. Okay. So the first relationship we need to get is this large relationship right here. This is the most important shape to look for our model. I'm sorry. Heidi. 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 This is the most important, it's the, it's the largest shape. We need to get that down, okay? So now if I break her, um, her silhouette down into her face, I guess, or her head, I would consider this um, the second most important shape, okay? So notice how I didn't jump into the features because as well as you can draw a nose or mouth, if you get it on the wrong head, it's not going to help you, okay? It's, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna do you much, okay? So, um, so where's the front of her, where's the part that um, separates the front of her face and the side of her face? It's not as clear as that sculpture that, or that bust I showed you in the beginning, okay? And the way it's lit right now, it's even harder to see, okay? Yeah? Uh, would it be sort of like right in the middle of the middle of her right eye, middle of her right, like somewhere here. Uh, a little bit farther. Over. Farther over here. Uh, a bit too far, like sort of the uh, corner. Okay, I like the way you think. <laughs> that's exactly what you're gonna be doing. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a mark. I'm say, oh no, 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 a little bit this way. Oh no, 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 a little bit that way. Okay, and it's gonna be a little bit different for everybody. Okay, so how I see it, I, I would, I'm going to draw a line that separates the front of her face from the side of her face. Okay, so we keep this time, right? 20. Yeah, okay. Has it been 20? You're 20. Oh, shoot. Okay. Real fast. I'm going to do this really fast because I'm going to do it again, okay? Um, so just pay attention uh, to the screen. Okay. 
So planes. And I'm simplifying these planes here, okay? So let's see here. Uh, what else here? Let me see what else can I do with this short amount of time. You see how it starts to have like uh, a more sculptural effect, okay? And when we paint, obviously we have to make these lines go away, but still be there. Okay, so and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, really soon, okay. Well, another thing I need to point out is the center line. The center line is not always in the center. Okay, so because we call it the center line, it, it, it causes a little bit of confusion. The center line is actually here. Then the center of the neck is there, and then down there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very important to keep these uh, things in mind. Um, any questions? I can keep going on and on, but I want to start the demo. Okay, and I'm going to revisit these ideas as as I do the demo. Yes. So the plane isn't when you say the front plane. Okay. Isn't the front of your face? It's the one that you're seeing light from the front of the picture, or from a certain angle. That's a great question. Uh, no, I mean, like, literally, where's the front of it? Right? So, for example, um, what are you calling that first plane that's getting all the light? That's not coming, it's coming from the light source, not from in front of her face, right? This one here? Yeah. Uh, I would say, okay, I'm going to put it on the mark here. Okay. I, I would say the light has its own plane. Because it ain't, it isn't flat. That area isn't flat. Okay, so it get, it does get because it's not as clearly defined or as easy easy to define. That's why this is a little difficult to teach because um, it's just not. There's no hard edges to differentiate um, the exact uh, the exact place where the plane shifts. Okay, so is the plane determined by the light or the place on the face? The place on the face. Okay, sorry. Right. Okay. okay. But but then the light is going to hit the plane that's facing the light. Right, which isn't the front necessarily the face. It's the, right. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Great, great question. Yeah. So so let me let me do let me just do another one more um, diagram because you know like I almost feel like if I don't do this it would almost be pointless for me to do the demo. You understand what I mean? So that way, we, we're on the same page. That way I'm just not talking to the canvas, right? Okay. So this original idea comes from um, our interpretation of the head as a cube. Okay. Um, there's another traditional way of, you know, interpreting the head like an egg. Okay. But 